Hello and welcome to another Scardcast Battle Report. Today, a more competitive game. Let's play some Leviathan Tournament Pack. The Dark Tier. Getting ready for the World Championships of Warhammer. That's right. This is a Leviathan Tournament Pack layout. We're playing on layout number one. We've got a mission. We've got Eldari versus Drukari. Oh, that's right. Let's dive into the armies, the deployment, and then the game. And here we have my test list, which I'm trying out. The aim of this list is as few HQs as humanly possible, Eldarily possible, and then as many towers as I can fit, because I really enjoyed them when I played all Coven. So why not run more of them? So here we have my one character, who's my warlord, the Beast Pack Master. That's right. Then I have three units of ten Cabalite Warriors with all the guns. I have two units of five Racks. Then I have three units of five Mandrakes, rounding it out. Three units of five Scourge, three Venoms, one Raider, one Kronos, and three units of Talos with Twin Luka Fire Gun, Gauntlets, and Haywire. And there you have it, folks. 2,000 points on the nose. Let's see what the Eldar have brought. And here we have Hamza's 2,000 points of Eldar. What did you bring today? I brought three Night Spinners. Uh, then I went down with two Shadow Spectre units uh, because they're awesome. Uh, two Warp Spider units. Uh, we got some Shroud Runners. Uh, D Cannon Wraith Guard with the Spirit Seer with Fate's Messenger. Autark Wayleaper, he's the Warlord. He's got the Fusion Gun and the lovely Starglaive. And I believe we got Mandy Blasters, not the Banshee Mask. Death Jester with the Phoenix Gem. Farseer to give something minus one a wound. Another five-man Wraith Guard unit with just a Spirit Seer. And three Ranger Troops. There you have it. 2,000 points on the nose. Yes. I, yes? It is. Excellent. Nice. Let's dive into the mission. As always, scoring is brought to you by Mini Wargaming Forge. Because you can get one of these too, with Skari Dice and everything. It's pretty cool. And the mission we're playing is Supply Drop, Search and Destroy, and Chilling Rain. That means two of the three objectives in No Man's Land are going to disappear, never to be seen again by the end of the game. It's going to be interesting. And we're both playing tactical objectives. The link for this, by the way, is down below. Here we are after deployment. Now, it is, of course, Crucible Battle, so, you know, well, not Crucible, uh, Search, and, Search and Destroy, so Table Quarters. Now, one of these objectives is going to leave on turn three, and one of them is going to leave on turn four. four. Omega is the only one that stays yeah, on Yeah, and the then table. one stays at the end of turn five. Anyway, it's going to get wild. So, you decided, I made you the defender, and you decided to deploy some scouts, uh, rangers back here just to be annoying yep. and to stop me from scout moving up that way if I want to put my beast pack over there. You also put one unit of scouts, uh, rangers over here. So I countered with some mandrakes back here. So if you go first, they die. If I go first, they won't die because they can move like super far that way. But at least I push you that way. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> uh, you decided to put your night spinners in the corner, all hiding. Now, of course, in uh, Games Workshop style or when you see these sides, they basically... These things block line of sight infinitely high. So it's all about getting angles to try and shoot and fight and get into terrain. So it might not look like as much terrain as you're used to. It might look a little bit less thematic, but it's very good for competitive play where you are looking for movement, you're looking for angles. Uh, so we'll kind of see how you can kind of maneuver to get in a position to get where you want to go. Now, this board is board one with a nice big line of sight blocker sort of area in the middle with an objective right there. However, in this mission, we don't know which objective is going to stay till the that end. That could be the last one. It could be that one. It could be that one. It could be this one. We do not know. Uh, you put your Shroud Runners over here. Yep. Spiders, Farseer, your Ortark. You put one unit of Wraith Guard without Fate's Messenger over there. And then you put in reserve, you have two units of Deep Striking Spectres. And one unit of Deep Striking Warp Spiders. And then you also put uh, Rangers in Strategic Reserve and then a Wraith Guard unit with Fate's Messenger in Strategic Reserve as well. That's right. So you're keeping plenty of reserves on the board ready to kind of check the flow of the game and see where everything goes. I put, um, I split my Cabalites weirdly this game. So I have two Cabalites worth of five because I split all three units of Cabalites with my three Venoms. So I put two units of five in here with a Blaster Dark Lance and then one Phantasm Grenade Launcher. Then I have one Phantasm Grenade Launcher here, Splinter Cannon and Shredder. Then I've got 
Shredder, Splinter Cannon in here, and then I have one Venom with all of the guns. So Dark Lance, Blaster, Shredder, Splinter Cannon, Phantasm, Ray Launcher. And then five with no upgrades in Strategic Reserve. Ooh, just for that tactic. Just for that, you know, yeah, exactly. Yay, five guys with rifles. <laughs> and then you have, uh, I did put my Scourge more aggressively. So Scourge, 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 because the Night Spinners are back there, they're going to be more mission-based rather than actual killing because I could shoot Wraith Guard, but then you shoot me back. So I don't know. I might not want that to happen. So we'll see. We'll see. It's a deterrent. <laughs> it's like Yanari's resurrected again. Exactly. And then over here, two units of little Mandrakes in the back corner. And of course, one unit of Cabalites on the objective just to uh, sticky that objective. And then I can move off and be happy. Talos, 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 and then a Kronos, and then a V-Pack Monster. Oh, and then Rex. Yeah, I got Rex too. There's so much stuff in <laughs> so this list. So many things. I love it. So with that, let's see who goes first. Okay, let's see who goes first. I rolled a... A one. Hey, I rolled a one. Oh, oh. Look at that. Try, it. try number, try again. I got, ah. I got two. <laughs> yes, that's why you Third come and play games. Charm. Third times a three. Oh, oh you did. Yeah. <laughs> I went up in sequences. Yeah. Yes. So you get to go first. Awesome. Come at me, bro. So Eldar turn number one. Now, start of the battle, we're going to roll the C. So we'll do the one that disappears on turn three. So one, two, three, four, five, six. The roll alpha. a dice. So that'll be the alpha that uh, goes away. One, two, three, four. So that one's going to go away early in the match. And then we're going to roll one, two, three, four, five, six for the Omega. So and this the one, will stay till the end. Of correct. This. That remains till the end. So go ahead and roll. I'll let Again? you do, do the honors. Oh. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. That stays till so the end. So that one will stay till the very end of the game. Okay. This is going to get spicy. Okay. I love it. Let's dive into turn number one. I got two secondaries. I got behind enemy lines and the one character's worth of assassinate. That's right, my beast pack monster. That's actually funny. It's like two in 16 chance that you roll it on turn one, <laughs> yeah. and it's the only character I have. Right, what's okay. been discarded? I sure, wonder. I love it. <laughs> Scam moves, you decide to... My shroud runners just went up nine inches, yep. taking this flank. Beast pack monster, usually I get him into the middle of the board. There's some nice line of sight blocking. Of course, if I can tempt you to get closer or further this way with that unit to get a line of sight, that would be good for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's not like there's a whole yeah. army's worth of Correct. Yeah, don't, mind, don't mind this. Behind the big walls. Don't, don't <laughs> mind them at all. So with that, onto the movement phase. We'll see what you end up doing. And uh, behind me lines, you're going to get some command points after because you'll get rid of that. We each get... Oh, no, because you have an old so you don't. Power. You don't benefit from that at all. So with that, uh, onto the movement phase, we'll be back after that. All right, just did my movement phase over here. We'll start with the simple start over here. We got Rangers that did their infiltrate. They came out over here. Maybe they make a charge and get behind enemy lines. Uh, then I got my Shrouders that pregame moved and landed here. Uh, they can put out some shots into some anti-infantry. Uh, my Night Spinner. A couple of them there have an angle to the Scourge as ooh, well, which ooh. is going to be good. That's how it's going to be exciting. And then we got five Wraith Guard that kind of moved up, but I think the way you position Ridvan, I can only get two of them really in. Mm -hmm. But what I'm kind of setting up for over here is potentially a Phantasm in your turn or a Fire and Fade in mine. Mm -hmm. But I think these Warp Spiders that I put in the middle will do the Fire and Fade to get my behind enemy. Yeah, so that's two CP there just to move even further out this way. And just to kind of get your points, right? You're starting to get your Early Assassinate. Points. So you do have a Precision plus a lot of shots that could potentially yeah. target the... Beast Plus Master. the Night Spinners. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can try and do it. Yeah. And then, of course, you've got your behind enemy lines. So even though it didn't seem like those cards were the easiest, you're making sure that you try and score those points as points are money in this game. Oh, yeah. Let's go into the shooting phase, and we'll come back after, see what it looks like. All right. So we got our shooting phase finished there. Uh, you got your assassinate. I'm so I, sad. I got it. Yes. Uh, so many so, precision. <laughs> we had the death gesture. We had the rifles. We had everything on it to them. Yep. We had warp spiders get the other secondary unlock there for behind enemy lines. And then beyond that, I just used the night spinners to sticky things down. So I looked at your fastest moving things. A Venom. A your, Kronos. And the Talos. The Talos. Uh, other than that, you did use two of your command points to strike and fade. So they moved another 12 to get behind enemy lines. And now you're going to essentially make the charge, baby. Make some charge there. Try to get in, tie up my scourge. Right? You don't want those dark glances running around, yeah. uh, raising havoc. Uh, and uh, the Claude Fiend might get charged and potentially killed there. So we'll come back. But other than that, so far, so good. Like the Eldar doing Eldar shenanigans, which is a great thing. End of the turn. Charges. They made a long charge. Got into the Mandrix. Yes, sir. You used one of your fate dice, a six, to automatically make this charge at least a seven. You rolled uh, up to ten. Got into there, got there behind enemy lines, and I wasn't able to kill more than two, sadly. But you did tie up the Venom and those Scourge as well. 
Yeah. And then over here, you decided not to charge the Torfiend. He is so good in melee. Yeah, he's okay. He's like five attacks, two damage, dev one. It is whatever. You, sure. <laughs> um, awesome. So with that, let's go to the scoreboard. So behind enemy lines for five, assassination for five, you as the defender gain 10 secondary points as we move into the bottom of the battle round, and we each get one command point as well. Uh, my Mandrakes, of course going into the sky, the two units that I have left. So we've got <laughs> Extend Battle Lines and Capture Enemy Outpost. Sadly, I, it's not really going to happen for Capture Enemy Outpost because you did end up doing the right thing and putting a bunch of Night Spinners on there, so the OC is quite high. However, I can do Extend Battle Lines, which I am excited about. Well, 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 Eldar. See, I don't want to get too distracted by the stuff in my zone because you have stuff that's going to be coming out at me, right? You yes. have one command point, I have one command point. So we're going to go ahead and make something happen. I have to try and kill them, them, and then I have to remember you have all your reserves. So I still need to push out and bubble out into the midboard, or else you're going to pin me in for another turn. So time to get aggressive. End of the movement phase. So good movement. I tried to bait out the Overwatch because I didn't want you to Phantasm. Yeah, but you sense. didn't take the bait. I was like, <laughs> I'm going to move this really squishy unit of Scourge. And you're like, no. I was like, I'm going to move this one little squishy unit of Scourge. You're like, no. Great. OK. Oh, and then he's going to. I resisted the temptation, one could say. Totally forgot that he was a thing. He's going to come up and uh, try to fight you as well. Makes sense. Um, over here, though, you didn't want to... I was going to get within nine for a charge of the Talos, so you decided to Phantasm then. Make sure you can all see them. So if I shoot you, you can shoot me back, which means I'm probably not going to shoot you now. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> Sad thing. Sad, because you can just bring one guy back from the dead, and then it's pointless. Then I just give you a free shooting face for no reason. Yeah. Um, I bought racks to kind of try and deal with them. I've got the Kronos that kind of moved in. to get, uh, I was going to give them a pain token to reroll charges for free. Sadly, that's not going to happen anymore. Um, and then over here, Mandrake's in this corner to zone out. This uh, Venom moved up this way with guns. These Scourge moved up over here with guns. This Raider advanced because it can go 20, moved around this way, but is on here, but pushing the Deep Strikers up nine inches that way to make sure you don't get any like shoot and fade and get onto my objective with any uh, any sneaky, sneaky guys. Specters. And then this unit Mandrake's back here. So essentially I'm trying to take control of my half of the board as much as you are. Of course, we know this objective stays, which does put a little pressure on you where you have to like try and take it away from me by the end. That makes sense, yeah. Okay, so with that, let's dive in to my shooting phase. I have a couple of pain tokens, so we'll see what we can do to maximize on that. End of the shooting phase. Well, I did kill the warp spiders. I tried to kill them with a talus so that the talus would be empowered for the rest of the game. They failed. So I decided to kill them with a rec unit to make sure I got an extra pain token. Doubled up. Um, and then I was able to get enough in range here to shoot him. Yeah. Uh, and the blaster just went through and just nuked it. him. But he does have this Phoenix gem. So on a two plus, he da, does da, come da, back da, to da, life. Dun, da, dun, da, dun. Oh, does. it's a chili pepper. He does come back to life. And he's all chillied moves. out. Yes, yeah. But at least that's it. I don't have to worry about him coming back to life later. And then we're going to the charge phase. I'm going to charge with some Talos, and then I'm going to charge with them into here. And there's going to, you know, we're going to try and kill some Rangers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So with that. We'll come back after the charge phase and look at scoring. End of the turn. The Stroud Runners are dead. The Rangers are dead. I made an 11-inch charge, by the way, with these racks. That was fabulous. Um, and then <laughs> at the end of the fight phase, the Cabalites moved back into the Venom because there was nothing on this objective, so I don't have to worry about contesting it, and it hides them within the shell again. And then I was able to move that unit of Cabalites that got out back into this Venom as well. And then the front unit of Talos came in killed the last round and so they're empowered for the rest of the game that's the full wounded unit because i have i do have one talus that has a wound so i wanted to empower the full unit. there you go they're gonna live this game yeah and then he did come back so he's just sitting right there so let's go to the scoreboard so on the scoreboard though i do get my extend battle lines for five points and i am going to get rid of capture enemy outposts because i don't like getting card locked that mm -hmm. will give me an additional command point so i'll go up to five and a command point at the end of my turn and with that, we dive into battle round number two. Meridos. So the objective is still on the board. Um, let's take a look at what your, uh, oh, and then we each get a command point. You actually, you get two, and then I get an extra one. So I messed that up. He, the Eldar are at two CP. I'm at three, because I took the one away. I'm the red, and Hans is the green. So primary scoring, only the middle counts. So I am on that one right now, and on this one, and there's nothing on this one. So no primary score for the Eldar as of yet. And with that, let's see what they pick for cards. I got no prisoners and cleanse. We're clearing things off objectives and off the table. 
Good thing I have a, a scourge with one model. <laughs> that's an easy two points. <laughs> Wee! And a Claude Fiend with two wounds. That's like four points right there. I know, right? I love it. <laughs> MSU for the win. And then there's Venom with four. Anyway, it's no prisoners against MSU Dark Eldar. It's like the easiest thing ever. Yeah. So uh, with that, though, we'll go into your turn. Take a look at the board. You do have um, uh, Warp Spiders and two units of, and a whole Wraith Guard unit and two units of Shadow Spikes. You've got lots of stuff, elements still to come in on the board. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to see what you decide to do with them as we move into the next turn. Awesome. So I just did my movement phase. I brought my Wraith Guard out of Strat Reserves over here, but Fate's Messenger trying to deal with some Talos. You got maybe four a bit of, of a can see there, and then they're in range, and then one is going to go into that Raider. Yes, sir. And then I brought Warp Spiders here to refuel for the first replenished stock that went out. You're Shouts. getting ready for uh, deploy Teleport Homers in my zone, yep. and also try and capture enemy outposts. So you're yep. basically keeping stuff that you can then throw my way and, and threaten my home stuff and my deployment zone. And I think I played against you enough where you're not going to let me deep strike and get into those <laughs> positions. So I have to naturally set myself up on the board. Oh, is that me? Yes, it is. I will zone out the whole table if you let me. <laughs> the cutting Archon scarring. You're like, I'm not going to kill anything, but if I box out the whole table, that's a win. Yeah. Uh, the Shadow Spectres came here to maybe do a little Fired Fate action over here. Rangers, I'm going to keep here to do some Investigate Signals because we know secondaries are important. Still haven't gotten that. Yep. And then Detchester jumped here to shoot some Talos. Keeping him within 12 of the Farsi that's playing that wolf to yep. make sure that you can... Because you did you did have that one turn where they're not. So now he's got the minus one to wound, not the Wraith Guard. That's correct. Okay, so with that, we're going to do some shooting. No Prisoners and Cleanse. So uh, you will be able to cleanse with him. So that's... Decent, so that'll be a cleanse there. And then that'll give you points. And then, of course, no prisoners. You're going to try kill that. You've got night spinners. You get you take your pick. No prisoners is no problem. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I agree with this. And we'll come back up to the shooting phase. End of the shooting phase. Okay, well, that unit of Talos got off lightly. Yes, very lightly. <laughs> <laughs> However, this unit of Talos did not. Yeah, and you did the stratagem too. I did, I did. I tried to keep them alive, but I did lose one. One's down to four wounds remaining. That Talos unit still has two left, but one's one wound remaining. You did kill the raider, though. Basically, you shot, you put automatic six wounds on it with a dev wound and then used a fate dice for that. Yep. And then a night spinner killed the raider. Just wanted to make sure you put those cavalites on foot, which is smart. They are battle shocked right now, but they'll be able to stick you once they're not battle shocked. And now you're charging into here. You did use your two CP to fire and fade this wraith guard onto your home objective. You're just yep. going to keep them there. Just you don't want to throw them away. You've got this is like your little zone, your land, the zone of operations. This is my uh, safe space. Your safe space over <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> and you are charging over here, and then once that charge is happening, I'm going to use my 2CP to uh, heroically intervene with that Talos. Yep. And then we'll get stuck in. Dun, dun, dun! TSN turning point! No, <laughs> no it was a really good turning good. point for you. So this, uh, they charged in. You only got three in because you want to try and keep your Shadow Seer alive. Yep. However, you only killed two of these Cabalites. And then my Talos killed three of these dudes. One of the best heroic interventions was great. ever. So he's actually down here, actually. And then... They get to shoot after I've made my attacks. Yeah. Now, making attacks happens just before consolidate, the same as the time you shoot. Because it's your turn, you get to choose to shoot me before I consolidate. If it was yeah. my turn, I could <laughs> consolidate and stop you from shooting. That's so true. Uh, so you're going to use your Wraith Guard rule to get two of the guys and a little spirit seer to shoot me. I only have four wounds left. But we got fake dice on our side. Oh, no, don't do it. I love it because it is the fight phase and you haven't used any. Yeah, okay, so with that, let's see what they do and then we'll come right back. But I just wanted to explain this whole little like, you know, little things like that. Timing can be very important. It's like a magic stack. And we're back. He survived. Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> this is the worst. I, uh, I passed one of two. I, sorry, I had to make one save. Yeah. One was a dev wound because you used a fate dice to make sure it did damage. And I passed it on the six up in ball. Good job, little Talos. He is so awesome. And then he lived with three wounds remaining. Oh, buddy. Okay. So with that, I do pile in. I uh, consolidate, sorry. Tag so me. now they're tagged. So they can't like fire and fade or get out of there or anything like that, which really helps me. And I'm also within range to flame and or shoot him because I can shoot out of combat as I'm a monster. You are a monster. Okay. So let's go to the scoreboard. Hamza did get mini cleanse for three points and did kill three different units for no prisoners. You got a raider, a venom. And no, a you got scourge. two of them, right? You? Two of them? Venom? Raider and Raider on a scourge. Yeah, yeah. So three. So that gives you a grand total of eight points, bringing up to eight secondary points yeah, yeah and with that we go to my turn number two and here we are i get investigate signals and deploy teleport homers awesome i still have mandrakes so this is good this is your setup so this well is good it. it's right it's exciting okay so with that 
Uh, let's uh, see what we can do. We each get a command point, so we each have one. Ah, oh, what a crazy game. And I do hold two of the objectives in No Man's Land, which gives me five points each. So I will get 10 points on my primary, which is really going to start helping me catch up to your secondary score here. Okay, there we go. So the Battle Shocks go away. That means that objective gets stickied. The Claude Fiend is leadership H because the Beast Pack Master is dead. Oh! He did it again! He did it again! And then I do OU1 on this little guy back here, and he is not Battle Shock, so that goes away. And uh, that's it. Everybody else is fine. Talos are units of two, so they don't ever Battle Shock, which is kind of neat. End of the movement phase. Lots of shenanigans. I decided to stay still here. He's not Battle Shock, so he's going to make sure he's on this objective to just give me some more OC on there. Um, with OC here, plus his OC, depending on what happens here, I could potentially help take that out, and that is a 9-inch charge there, so we might do something there as well. Oh yeah, I set it all up. The Scourge, because they're not going to shoot any tanks, might as well get me points. So he moved back here, got me points. Yep. These Mandrakes came here back, got me points. These Scourge that were here moved out this way to see the Wraith Guard that were in that building, forcing you to Phantasm them back. Yep. Uh, but I did get a Dark Lance, a Blaster, and two of these also. here. I'm going to sacrifice them for next turn, however... It just prevented you from phantasming him forward because then I would have charged you. Yeah, I think you're almost like uh, pushing me to the corner now. Yeah, we, the tables have turned, <laughs> my cousin. <laughs> the third tables have turned. <laughs> um, and with that, the, the racks are just doing what they put them in the list for, which is just screening. As you can see here, just kind of making sure that there's lots of room. And then my Cavalite Warriors are getting to the middle of the board. There's lots of OC in these, in these little things, so I can throw them out and you know, contest objectives and just get in the way and they've got guns and they're just generally annoying. Too many good rules. There's lots of stuff. Um, and with that, I'm going to get my two corners for investigate signals. And then that unit is just within your deployment zone. And so they will be pressing buttons to deploy teleport homers. And uh, we'll go into some shooting phase stuff. Well, I don't literally know shooting because you've hidden everything back there um, and back here. I did get one shot. I did one wound with the Luke Fire Gun and then one devastating wound with the Haywire oh. just killed him for three. <laughs> poetry. That's poetry. So now he's paint token forever. Yay. <laughs> this is amazing. Well done, you little tank. That's right. Good job. He's already done more than I could ever imagine holding a whole flank by himself. By himself. All right. So with that, let's do some Charging. charges. I'm going to go ahead and charge this because I can still get nine and nine from here or with him. Uh, to start. Actually, I'm going to measure that out, make sure I don't mess up my... My uh, box out. My box out. End of the fight phase. You didn't do any damage here. I did spend my CP to minus one to wounds just to make sure. I just want, but you got some lethal hits in there anyway. But then he saved. And then I killed one because you made a fate dice reroll to keep him alive. Or yeah, use the fate do. dice, not a reroll, a fate dice to keep him alive to make sure you bring another guy back. Agreed. So with that, it is the end of my turn two. Let's go to the scoreboard. Scoreboard, I get deploy teleport homers for five points and I get a uh, four point of SC8 signals. So that's 14 secondary points so far as we move into battle round number three. Battle round number three, and you get two command points, and I get one command point. However, for primary, um, no, no, no. So no primary for the Eldar. They're going to have to get real aggro as we move into the bottom half of this game here, the middle of the game, sorry. And let's uh, see what cards you get as well. With the Tears of Isha, you brought a Wraith Guard back. Yep. Bring them to three so you don't have to take Battle Shock on them anymore. However, with an easy command point, you can always pull back, shoot, and yep. then charge, which will help you clear that objective. However, in turn four, that will be going away. That's correct. Okay. So it's almost as if you don't have any purpose there. That's right. Good job. He held off just, <laughs> just long enough. enough. <laughs> okay, yeah. let's see what cards you get. I got Capture Enemy Outpost, which I don't think is going to happen this turn, Sky. I think you set up really well. I'm just checking my spiders. No, nope. and then Investigate. I do have a couple units in corner still. Those Rangers, in fact, might just pull that off. I like it. That's why you kept them there and did not expose them. I was, I was them. patient. That's right. You need, you need little units to do stuff, so that's a good choice for cards. And you haven't used your new, new orders. orders yet, so you could if you wanted to, to cycle through Capture. I think I will do a new orders there then. Yeah, I think that's a good, that's the, I think that's a good choice. It's going to give me an engage. Oh, that's not bad. Not You've bad got lots of little units. You can probably do that. So, okay. That's better than not scoring any points. So we'll take a look at the board here. We'll come back. Um, I'm curious to see how fast this mess explodes into the <laughs> middle of the board for the late game. <laughs> this is about to get lethal. It's here. about to get real aggro real fast. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so with that, let's dive into the game. You still have Rangers and Shadow Specters in, in reserve as well. But I was able to 
box you out. So you basically have to start like in this area slash maybe down here. Well, that's why you decide with your chronos there, right? You decided yeah, not to make the charge. I decided not to charge because then I measured it out. If I would have charged, I would have left a nice hole yep. right here, which would have been very bad. See, sometimes you don't have to see red. You have to look at the state of the board. Correct. And play Correct. Way. Yeah, exactly. My third movement phase, I brought in my reserves. I brought in some shadow specters in the corner, some rangers over here. My warp spiders flickered over here. Maybe I think I'd take out some of Scarry's troops. Yeah, they've got uh, lots of little units back here, basically. Doing a really good job at boxing me out. You literally didn't allow me to come into your half, which is really good. Uh, my Wraith Guard is setting up to round two of those guys, baby. Uh, Spectres came out for Venoms. Yep. And then, I don't oh, know yeah. how that guy's still alive, but I have he is. so much of my RV dedicated on that side to maybe shoot him. Yeah, because we actually made a mistake. It's this objective that does go away turn four. So that yeah. one disappears, then that one's worth eight, and that one's worth eight. So it's important and then this one there. goes away, and then that one's worth 15 at the end of the game. Yeah. So um, over here, you do have a four of them that can see here, but you're going to shoot and fire and fade uh, one or two guys onto this objective here. You have one there. You've got him there. There's a whole bunch of different bunch things. of little shooting. And then, of course, you've got investigate signals with that ranger unit and investigate signals with your farseer over here as well. Oh, so do you mind actually all, if I just slide his butt? I do like not this. mind at all. Just so shoot them. You want to try and kill him? It's oh, man. How dare you try and kill my one cavalry warrior that didn't die and didn't bow shot? <laughs> he killed the death gesture. Single hit. No, he didn't. That guy did. This guy, they he, did. He killed everything. him the second time around. Oh, they did. They There's killed him the first time. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> they got rid of the Phoenix gem and then he finished the part. Did really well. Okay. So, uh, shooting phase, we'll come back and show you what it looks like after. End of the turn. And I'm going to let Hams explain. Oh, I know there's no Talos God. here, but what did it take to kill this Talos? Okay. So, it took two Wraith Guard, Wraith Seer, two Night Spinner indirect weapons for you to finally die on the exact number of wounds that you have. <laughs> One more dice roll and he would have lived. Oh, and so I would have probably just walked away. Yep, uh, Kronos is fine. He yep. didn't take any damage from them, but the, you did kill that Venom. And then on this side, you did do quite a lot of damage by removing two of the three units you took out. You did kill that unit of uh, Scourge. You did kill the four-man, but I still have the... the, the, the it used to be a uh, five-man, but it's now a three-man. I still have one Venom left for the guys, and I still have a single unit of Talos. Stop it. I'm because you did nuke that Talos unit with Wraithguard and your Autark. So yep. all in all, not terrible. No, I just think it took a little bit more shots than I needed to, but at the end of the day, I'm happy yeah. to clear it off my side. Also, the two OC that you killed from him is great because I would have. Uh, oh, that actually, that one goes away at the end of the turn. I would have actually scored 15 points on primary That's if it. he stays there. So you had to kill him. You had to kill him dead. Not okay, so good. with that, let's dive into my turn number three. But uh, overall, I feel like board positioning. I'm in a great board position. And now it's a matter of trying to stall you long enough to not get to that objective, I think, is the key to this, to trying to, try to hold it. But your shadow specters, they're so fast. Like, it, they're here, but they'll be here, okay? So don't, don't let it fool <laughs> don't you. Don't mistake it. Don't yeah. mistake it. They're here, but they're really, like, here. Um, let's go to the scoreboard. So at the end of the turn, you will get um, two, uh, four for investigate signals. So you go up to 22 for secondary points. And you are going to keep Engage in play, which is definitely very interesting there. So you go up to 22 there. Then we go into my turn number three. I get a command point. Actually, I'm a liar. I'm discarding Engage. You're going to discard I'm it? Just, I thought about it. Don't like it. Yep. You don't want to get card locked. Well, I think at the same time, if I expose myself on the table too much, you're going to take out my army. Yeah, that does make sense for the end game, right? Yeah. So we got two CP. You go up to two CP as well. You don't get a CP for that because you have an Autark that gives you command points. And then we go into my turn. And my cards are Defend Strong. Of course, my Mandrakes go back into the sky. Of course. And Storm Hostile Objective. Take an objective you control. Okay. I think I can do that. So with that, let's uh, get my 10 points on primary because I do still hold two objectives in No Man's Land, bringing me up to 20 total on primary, uh, which does help offset the secondary points. So the only objective that uh, you hold that I can take away is this one or that one. Probably going to go for that one. Sounds and that'll give right. me five points for Storm Hostile. It also contesting it denies you eight points in next turn. I feel like there's no primary for me in this game. It has definitely been very, it's been a hard primary score because a lot of your stuff is like smaller support units. Yeah. And a lot of my stuff is like aggro, get in your face units. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's like an interesting dynamic because you can kill anything in my army. Yeah, but right? I don't think I can hold the objective down myself. Interesting. But it's good. that's why we practice. It's good to practice different scenarios. And in this one, of course, 
the fact that that one stays kind of forces you to try and get in there at the end. However, it's not the end of the game, and you can always get as many points as you can, and I could always just fall through my fingers like this, ah, and then I lose somehow. <laughs> it's just, it's happened to me before. So let's go into my movement phase. And here we are at the end. I decided to hide my talus. They're just going to hide behind this wall. You know, uh, turn five might be able to go do something. We'll see. Keeps you honest with your night spinners, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Because I get like big game hunter or bring it down or something. Yeah. Um, they decide to advance with a pain token. They got three on there. So I was able to get my uh, secure hostile, storm hostile objective. Wow, taking me off. I put one unit of reserves here. You overwatch with a shadow spec, just killed three. So then create a bit of room. I put my mandrakes there just to get some more shots and try and deal with them, potentially get a charge in. I moved him up for a tennis charge into the Wraith Guard, potentially doing that as well. And then over here on this side, I crammed a bunch of OC on my home objective for defend. And then I have moved these guys up, forcing these uh, spiders to go back with Retreat. a phantasm um, as well. So with that though, we got a couple of guns, we got a couple of shots. And uh, yeah, let's do the shooting Spicy phase. Mid Spicy times. But well, end of the shooting phase and fight phase because it wasn't too, like, did not much happen. I was able to kill that unit of Warp Siders. They did, yeah. like, Phantasm back, which is good. Yeah. But then that Venom just went to town with the double, the triple hits. Splinter Cannon. It was like, oh. <laughs> just so killed good. them all. And then I made an, a 10 charge here. And I made a 9 charge with a Mandrake. Yeah. And basically just tied up this side of the board again. However, let's go to the scoreboard because that really did help me at the end of this turn here. So end of the turn, I will start to defend my stronghold and I will get five points for Storm Hostile Objective, bringing me up to 19 secondary points. However, as we move and I still have my one command point and you have zero, I keep on forgetting that I'm red and you're green. <laughs> <laughs> so we go on to battle round number four. The middle objective has gone away. However, yeah. my Cavalite Warriors and Kronos have denied you primary yet again. Wow. So cheeky. So cheeky. And then we go into uh, your scorecards. I get a command point. So I go up to two and you have two thanks to your Autark that is in play as well. All right, I got Area Denial and Defense Stronghold, which I think are both kind of doable. Yep. Uh, it just depends on those Talos, which you strategically kept in the middle. Apparently, I totally planned for this. Oh, you do? You calculate. <laughs> do, do you know how to count cards? Uh, you you predict the probability. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's, you know how many times I've been like, I'm going to do this just in case. Oh, look, you, oh. you drew the exact card. I didn't actually think of that, though. But, but it's it came happy through, right? accident. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, this is the last two turns here, but I think because of this last objective being present over here, I don't think I have much that I can do to deal with this because you took out that Warped Spider key unit. What I'm going to try to do is get as many secondary points on this right now and pretty much take out this side of the board because I believe you could still get secondaries based around this side. But yeah, I think I have behind enemy lines. It's yeah. still one that I can grab, so, so you can try zone everything. that out. I, I have something like, I think I have um, uh, overwhelming forces, one that I haven't drawn yet. So get off the objectives like, in Things a like that. And then at the end of this turn, this objective is going to go away as well. So, yeah. so um, But other than that, you're going to be playing, trying to score your secondaries. The difference. Now, even though I... Even though I have models there, I don't think I'm within three inches of the center, which means so even if you area. don't get anybody in there, you might just get three points okay. as well. Even if you don't kill them, it's like a mini one, but we'll we'll just check the the we'll check where the where the middle is. Okay, let's do this. Turn number four for the Eldar. Okay, quick mid TSI turning point again. Da -da 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 -da. So he decided to use a fate dice to advance 18 to get Arid and I'll basically to try to get in. However, yep. I Twinlit liquefier gunned him. Double six. Twelve hits. hits. Did three damage because you rolled really well. With a reroll, kept him alive. I got one hit with a haywire. And now I failed the first wound roll. So this is the twin linked roll. Need a four to wound him, but a six is dev wounds. And we'll just kill him. Don't you do it? Oh! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yes! Wah, wah, Get out! Wah, there goes the Autar. <laughs> and they killed something. Pain token and their pain token for the rest of the game! No! <laughs> <laughs> what? what is this? Great, that's an awesome story. I love that. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's why we filled the TSN turning points. Well, I'll let you continue your movement phase now. Uh, sure. Yeah. That's uh, That was great. Okay, moving phase. So, uh, not everything went to plan, Hamza. 
No, I mean, nope. we, uh, we just saw the amazing highlight moment. Probably the highlight moment of the game. That, I'm is, not gonna lie. that, was, that cool. was pretty awesome. Yeah. And I love that we decided to That and the that. two six up involves on the... Apparently, the Talos just really want to be on my list. I had already scrubbed that from my memory, and the fact you brought it up, <laughs> triggered right now. Uh, no, but what I did is I broke out of my deployment zone. Now, uh, I have to pretty much defend my stronghold whilst trying to take out this Talos unit. Um, I could make some crazy charge. Uh, potentially, but we'll see how that one plays out. Yep. But what I'm going to try to do is neuter as many of these things to stop me from getting behind enemy lines and getting a potential assassinate. So I put my character back there, and then my spirit seers are here embedded in their units. Yeah, and I don't, I don't have a precision really in this list other than the one. I think they're all hidden now. The sniper rifle there, sniper rifle here, but you have Fate's Messenger, so a precision's never getting rid of him. That's correct. So, and yeah. the first year is there to flip dice to a six as well. Yep. So right now I'm just trying to reduce the casualties here while minimizing your movement. Yep. And that's the goal. I like it. So let's go into the shooting phase. We'll come right back. End of the shooting phase, Hamza. Oh, we killed the Mandrakes. We almost killed the Cabalite unit. Yep. Yeah, uh, the, we the killed Venom the Venom here. Well. These guys are nigh invincible once again, <laughs> learning from their brothers of arms. <laughs> I almost killed the Mandrakes, almost killed the Cabalites out. Did use a minus one to wound against the Wraith Guard, which really did help. As well. um, and uh, yeah, they lived. And then you charged in. You charged in with the Wraith Guard. You charged in with the Night Spinner. And then they failed a five inch charge to Poor try and spectators. kill the Lost Mandrake because you wanted to stop me from bouncing in and out. That's basically. correct. Yeah, I just don't need you to get into the zone here because I know how many points you can still score later on. That's right. Because, oh, like, yeah, two more turns of secondaries. Ooh, okay. So, with that, let's dive into fights over yep. there. I have zero command points. So, it's whatever it is, it is. And that's the end of the fight phase. You did kill all the Cabalites. Woohoo! Yeah, he like run them over. And that was it. I, without even a tank shock, we did it. That's right. Let's go to the scoreboard. So, end of the top of uh, turn number four. So, Eric and I, you cannot get. I will discard. And now, because you already got an extra command point thanks to your Ortark, who oh, then my died. God. Ah, I'm gonna, just going to rub it in, rub it in, <laughs> massage it in. <laughs> so you don't get a command point there. You are starting to defend your stronghold. Yep. However, I successfully defend my stronghold, bringing me up to 22 points, tying up the secondary game here as well. So with that, we go into my turn number four. We each get a command point yet again. So we each get a command point. Plop, ploppity plop. And I hold one objective in No Man's Land, yep. which does bring up this up to 28 points. Why? Because this, this, this mission is one of the wildest ones because it can like snowball massively. very, very heavily. Then for cards, as you defend your stronghold, I am being ordered to cleanse. Ooh. Nice. And to a sow. Uh, you, you thought about yeah, it. I thought about it. You predicted thought about it. it. Predicted it. And that's, there it is right there. Yep. Okay. Onto I'll the turn. Okay, so assassinate. I think that's the easiest one for me to assassinate, but you that's still have a command point to run away, and they're really slow. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see what happens. I'm gonna. You still haven't gotten overwhelming force, funnily enough. Yeah, right. So I'm probably gonna get off all of the objectives, and uh, just make sure that I'm ready to uh, do some stuff. I got some scourge back here. They might be able to actually move here and get a line on that night spinner. So I might. I might finally get to shoot a tank. With I don't my, think you shot a single with dark, my dark this whole game. I haven't shot a well, the ones in the cab lights. Oh, well, sure, I had yeah. a few, sure. I do owe you a couple of battle shock tests. Battle shock on him. Oh, he's good. Um, battle shock on the Oh, the Mandrake. That's right. He technically would he's battle shock, so he would be in battle shock when he came out. He I was guess. in the yeah, he uh, I we I think he has to take battle shock even if he's off the board. That's fine. Yeah. And then battle shock on that lone guy back there. He was also oh, metal shocks. Okay. I scared you, eh? You did. I, a little, I was a little rattled. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's go into the movement phase. I really want to see these Talos go around murder stuff. Okay, that'll be fun. <laughs> and here we go. So end of my movement phase. So the Talos have just shuffled forward because they're night spinnered. Um, I got the two liquid fire guns in range on the side of them. The Haywire is here. They moved out this way to potentially shoot that. They, he moved out this way to prevent shoot that. They moved out this way to try and deal with these little rangers. And then I moved off the objective to make sure you don't get... And off to this one to make sure you don't get um, overwhelming, force. overwhelming force. I did move him on here. I'm going to start the cleanse. Yeah. If it works, it works. If not, then that's fine. Hey, I'm not. He, he had a job. And he's he has. He's, yeah, if his, he passed his battle shock, he's got one job. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Okay. So let's do some shooting. We'll come back after that.
Okay, end of my turn. Oh, end of my shooting phase. Yep. I did kill a tank with some shooting. Woo! I did nine damage with the haywires. Haywires, key. And then one lance got through and finally did. But you did try and keep it alive from that dark lance. Oh, yep. sneaky, sneaky with a fate dash. Um, then I did shoot one shredder, just killed the entire. <laughs> <laughs> my poor rangers. <laughs> just one shredder. It's like, look, I have a web. Uh, 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 a, what is it? Warp spider. It's basically a warp spider gun. Like yeah. they have like a style of warp spider gun that's like the same monofilament style weapon or whatever. Okay. I think you had a cool idea with the grenades on these guys because technically a grenade is not an attack, so it wouldn't have allowed them to Correct. shoot you back. Right? I was out of eight inches, or I would have tried to kill one potentially if I spike it to Wraith Guard just with mortals, which means I, it's not like it's not an attack or anything. They can't shoot me back. No shooting for me. Okay, I did kill them. We're shooting. He's doing the cleanse, so I'm gonna go ahead and charge him into the ranger. Yay! And then <laughs> this Talus is going to charge yeah, into the Wraith Guard. And that is cocked. Anything with it. And then they go in. He is in. Seven. Actually, I need to measure that. Uh, but yeah, then we'll fight. So, end of the turn over here. I uh, killed two of the Wraith Guard, even though you actually made some good saves there. And then I killed that little guy with him. However, I have one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five. So, I will successfully cleanse. Mm -hmm. However, no assassinate though. So let's go to the scoreboard. I got two secondaries. I got storm hostile and attempting target. But you'll be able to do both actually, because I got off to stop you from getting like overwhelming force. However, you did keep two in your pocket for a strike and fade, which was the key. Your moving phase, so that can move up and then strike and fade fourteen inches up. That's correct. They moved up into the middle. You're just going to kill a bunch of cavalite warriors, and yep. you can still shoot these Talos yes. because they're in combat. And then they decide to stay in combat because you need your two CP for a strike and fade. Yes, Thanks to the Ortark, basically. But that Ortark, man, gives you so many resources all game. If so he stays, he's just so good. He's an auto include every time. Unless you're taking a brain, in which case. Your brain just plays a different mechanic. It's a different Ortark game. just allows you to have tactical resources. Your yeah. brain's more like the Inari with the offense. And then you get all the Dark Eldar stuff, too. That's so good. Yeah. That's so good. Okay, shooting phase, and then we'll come back. And recap of the turn. Sorry, the mics died, so I had to switch them out. Fire and Fade, get you 10 points. Yep. You shot them down to two men. You shot them down to two, and you slowed them down. You didn't shoot them. You did kill that with that whole unit Wraith Guard. That second unit Wraith Guard. Yeah, they it's did crazy. really well. It's crazy how much that Fate's Messenger just tweaks it. Just enough to be annoying. Uh, but you did roll two lethals and then two deaths, so they just died. Yeah, that was <laughs> easy. And then it exploded and killed the... The Cavalite. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, other than that, you did shoot the little unit of Cavalites off with the Shadow Specters, and, and I'm just one guy left, charge. and you're going to charge, and that's that. Okay, so charging him, and then that's it. End of the turn. So you did kill that, you got onto that objective, you get your points, and now we move on to my turn number five. Hostile objective and tempting target. There you go. Ten points. Bring your grand total to 35 secondaries. Can't really stop Eldar from scoring secondaries. You spent both of your CP there. That's correct. I still have two left. As we go into my turn, I score. I get up three, and you have one. And then I get two more cards. My Mandrake, of course, pops back in reserve. Oh, yep. Engage on all fronts. And kill stuff. And no prisoners. I do owe some battle shock tests. I'm gonna go ahead and spend my once per game battle shock on these racks over here, so that they are not going to. I'm not gonna risk them running. They're so brave. OC three on a on a. Uh... No, I think they're OC two. Falcons are OC three. Oh, okay, perfect. They can't really do anything. Maybe charge in. So let's see about them. So they're not battle shocked. Then we have over here. They're not battle shocked. And then the one mandrake is not bow shots. Okay. So with that, let's try to get my engage. And I don't know if I, I might be able to kill something if the Scourge decide to like get excited about life yeah. and, uh, and kill something. Other than that, I should be able to get engaged there. The Mandrake should be able to go back there and get me engaged over there. And then I'll have Rax and then Scourge. Excellent. So that's pretty much my turn five thought process. Okay, end of the turn here. You were able to overwatch with one Wraith Guard when I got into here kill one and guy. killed one guy because you used a Fate Dice to do five damage on him just to make sure he was dead, which forced my Mandrake to come down here, use two CP to fire and fade onto yeah. the objective. But that's three OC to your three, so that's only contested. I need to make a 10 inch charge. Roll, baby, with a pain token. And I didn't kill you with the Dark Lances. I guess that's good. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay, because you just slowed down, so I need a 10. Will 
The racks get there. Oh, no. Pain token reroll. Reroll. Re Come on, baby, baby. Let's go. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> like every time. <laughs> oh. Hooray. Power Good job. Racks. Power to the racks. All hail the racks. All hail the racks. <laughs> now, do they add insult to injury and do four damage to a tank? <laughs> <laughs> Paint token, because I would give them my one of my last paint tokens. No, they just do one damage. Okay. Oh, sad. Yeah. yeah, they did a wound. Okay. Yeah, eat that. Eat it. <laughs> and then you get to fight me back. Oh, dude, this could be a moment. That Bumper could be. That hitting, would be. Hitting on fives because I'm bracketed. Oh, oh, oh okay. One Only hit. one. Okay, and okay. Then... Good, good, good. No, you uh, no I'm T4. It does wound. Uh, yes. Does he save? Nope. Does he feel no pain? He does feel oh no pain. Oh my god, that's so <laughs> symbolic to get a scarred cat dice on the last roll of the game. I love like it. Hobzell, that was fantastic. That was awesome we'll come back with an after action report. That was really fun. Let's go to the scoreboard and see the final score. So I will get engaged for only three quarters because I need to make sure that Mandrake was able to fire and fade. Yep. So that gives me three points for that. Uh, no, three. two points. Five. Two points. Three oh, three because it's tactical. Yeah, so I get three for that and then no prisoners. I didn't kill anything. Yeah, I guess not. So just three points. So I do go up to 28 points there. However, that 10-inch charge does spin me up here 15. to 15. So that's 30, 43 points, which is like, that was, I decided to do that instead of the, the engage just because I was like, yes, it gave me the biggest. is really good. Yeah, 43 points. Other than that, so basically it was really the primary, the Dark Eldar just stopped the Eldar from scoring primary and that is a Dark Eldar victory. Thanks for coming down, Hamza. Oh, thank you for having me. It was great to be on stream once again. What was the TSN turning point? As much as it was against me, I gotta say there was two major moments. One was that Autark moment that was amazing. And the other was, I think when your Talos took out the Death Chester by himself. That was another, I think you rolled a six I again. did on the dead wounds. <laughs> so I think it came back to your Talos, which that build with the Talos, it's really difficult to deal with them. I was slowing them down all game, but I think at the end of the game, those are the two big moments. Yeah, I think those two, especially because it just held off your flank long enough that then your reserves like couldn't really push into my zone. I had like enough resources left and it yeah. just stopped me from scoring that primary. That was definitely, those Talos, man. Did really well with them. Love them. I think that Devastating Wounds made me play more conservative too in that fashion. My Wraith Guard were scared because every six you roll, that's a dead Wraith Guard, yeah. dead Wraith Guard. So I think just the way you played with them, high aggro into the middle, I had to slow everything else down. Yep. Really well played by him once again. Definitely a hard mission though, especially when going second. Yes. Yes, because like as, as I went second, I had like last dibs on the objective. I yeah. almost didn't get it though. That was that came down oh, to the last oh, roll. Oh, that came down to the last roll of the game. Yeah. Other than that, um, make sure you check out Bloodbath and Beyond. Ooh. You guys are streaming, right? Yeah, we stream uh, usually once a week. We stream all the league games, usually Ontario League and Bloodbath League. If you're in Southern Ontario, come join in. Mike Harrison runs that. And starting December 4th, we're doing a new league style, which is team tournament style. Nice. So you run three main teams. What you do is your two captains, they would just do a quick FaceTime chat, and then you would do pairings. You have three weeks to get your games in, and because every league we've done is differential scoring, and now we're giving everyone in the community an idea of what it's like to play in teams. Yeah, so WTC style. Yeah, exactly, and I think that's been very inspired by yourself and the other guys on WTC that compete for us. Well, good luck down at the World Team Ta World, no, the World Championships, Championships of Warhammer. Yeah, the team championships are in uh, August. <laughs> other than that, thanks all for coming down for the game. Thank that was really fun. Done. I hope you all enjoyed this more competitive like game with the GW layouts and stuff like that. Of course, if you have any suggestions, leave a comment down below. Like the videos to see more of these, and a huge shout out to the channel patrons like Hamza, who without whom I couldn't do this. So thank you so much. The link is down below. Best way to support the channel is that way. Other than that, awesome. thanks for coming down, Hamza. Thanks again. Ah, the dark kid. Bye. Bye. <laughs>